Thank you. And let's bring up uh, Shane Aleniak from Comscope. I'm going to do a little bit of setup for, for Shane because what he's talking about is, is, is pretty geeky. But uh, if you think about how information gets from one place, and come on out, Shane. If you think about how information, digital information, gets from one place to, to, the, to the next in cable television, it's called QAM. And QAMs grew up in different time frames. So there was, first there was digital video, have a seat, and then, then uh, broadband and cable modems, and then voice over IP. And in each one of those categories, a different vendor community you know, swirled around it and populated it with QAM devices. So for, there's a whole vendor community around video QAMs. There's a whole vendor community around broadband QAMs. And to some extent, a whole video community around voice QAMs. And so now we're to this point where if you talk to people in operations, they're like, every time I turn around, I'm spending more money on QAMs. Why can't we have a one-size-fits-all QAM? Which brings us to you, Shane. That's, that was the Perfect. setup I promised you for this difficult, sometimes difficult conversation of what the heck are you talking about? Exactly. So what ahead. is he talking about? Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. So I'm going to talk to you today about um, intelligent wideband uh, edge qualms. So, you know, if you look at Comscope as a company, we've got a lot of different initiatives underway, and they really fall into three different categories, technology, intelligence, or energy. And we thought this was a really nice example because it kind of talks about all three of those areas. So I'm going to talk to you about a particular product, our LXS 16016, fairly new product for us. And we're really excited about it because it's an all digital product, it's a wideband product, and it's a universal product. And OK, conceptually, what does that all mean? Right. Um, by doing it all in the digital domain in an ASIC, we're able to really get the density up and the power down. So historically, edge qualms, lots of stages, lots of conversion from the digital domain to the RF domain, lots of power-hungry circuitry. And, and honestly, when we look and we talk to our customers and we look at their head ends, edge qualms are a key part of that power draw and a key part of that curve that Daniel was talking about going, as we keep adding all these qualms, we are in real danger of running out of power in space and, and cooling. So what our goal with this was, was to really come up with the most dense solution but also let's address energy and let's address intelligence at the same time. Um, and what this allows us to do is really work with the entire band, the entire RF spectrum, the entire HFC spectrum, turn on qualms as they're needed through software, but also by doing an all digital design, let's make the incremental power draw of adding those qualms very, very efficient. And that's what I'm gonna really talk a little bit more about. Okay. So really the value prop was pretty simple. Today, if you turn up new services, as you say, you're adding more qualms, you're readjusting the ethernet cabling, you're readjusting the coax cabling, you're morally basically redoing the plumbing every time you add services. That not only takes a lot of time, um, it takes up a lot of space, a lot of power, and a lot of HVAC for cooling. So what we wanted to do was go to an intelligent design where all of a sudden you're using software, and you're turning up services in minutes now, and as we keep hearing, the, the, the size of the services, the number of services, the, de you know, the, the density and scale of the services is dramatically increasing and continues to increase. Mm -hmm. So we need to be able to be very efficient in how we turn up services. Um, and, and we wanted to go to a software controlled ASIC engine to do that. So let's, let's take leverage technology and then let's make it smart. Mm -hmm. And that's really what we did with this product. Let's, as Daniel said, let's also recognize we need to make our networks very reliable. Um, so that was another key focus for us, is let's really target 5.9's availability. Let's make a product where when we add services or we make moves, adds, and changes, we're not impairing our customer service. So now all of a sudden we can very efficiently add services. We can also not impair our customer's existing service because we're making changes to our network, we're rolling out a new service, we're moving the how we segregate, all the things that the day-to-day -day operations, let's keep it transparent to the customer. And then at the same time, let's really reduce the operational costs. Historically, a lot of focus on capital costs, rightfully so, very efficient networks. But let's recognize that if we look at the total cost of ownership, we've got to take into account kind of those watts per qualm. How many qualms can we get for a watt? Let's recognize that there's power in HVAC and space associated with that. So what are, what are the watts per qualm these days? This is a new metric on me. Um, really what we're trying to target, so historically they're up like in the before twos. before and after? Yeah. Um, we talked a few years ago, they were quite high. You know, I, I would say right now we're probably in that two watts per qualm. And really what we're all trying to get down to is the sub one watt. Mm -hmm. 
with this product, what we're targeting for the 160 qualms, the entire service group, half a watt per qualm. And okay. what we're trying to do, and we'll show this in an example, is a case where we've got kind of a base scenario and then we're adding 50% more capacity and it's costing us an additional 0.1 watt per qualm. So trying to get very efficient in how we add this. So this is kind of a bit of an example. So we looked at one good example. Um, a customer deploys 36 qualms in a service group, pretty common right now, mix of video on demand, switch digital video, docs as traffic. Mm -hmm. Pretty common, pretty good common scenario. We've got one of our large tier one customers that we base this on. That would be 1,170 watts per that chassis. That's um, 16 service groups. That's about two watts per qualm. If we added basically another 36 qualms, doubled the capacity, so really increased the amount of video on demand, Doxis rolled out a new IPTV service, a lot of our customers are doing that right now, the incremental would just be an additional 0.1 watts per qualm. So trying to get much more efficient and much more intelligent in how we do this. Yep. The other nice thing would be kind of how we would do that. Historically, what would happen is you'd add a lot more hardware, and um, you'd go in and you'd recable it, you'd redo your Ethernet cabling, you'd redo your RF switching and combining, and you'd rebuild that service group, and you'd redo the plumbing. What this example is, and I apologize, it's a spectrum analyzer, but it's kind of an easy way to show it. That would be the 24, that would be 24 qualms and one gigahertz spread out across that entire spectrum. What we want to be able to do is now go to a software GUI and say, okay, I've got 24 qualms, I want to add in another 12 qualms, I go in, I provision the 12 qualms, I basically decide on what, how I, what, what type of qualm I want them to be, a video qualm, a data qualm, what kind of modulation, and I provision them, and I turn them on. So now all of a sudden I've added 12 qualms, and I've done it in minutes. I haven't had to touch any of the, no one's had to go to that actual hub site, touch the cabling, touch the hardware, make any changes. They've gone in and they've just provisioned those additional services. And kind of a last picture kind of gives you a sense on density and scale. So essentially what we've got there is a seven foot rack and we've got eight of those products racked out. So that's 128 service groups, each one being 160 qualms. So that's about 20,000 qualms and that would take half a watt per qualm. Wow. Yeah. Love to talk to people more about it. Um, we've got a booth very close by here, booth number uh, 2059. Right We're just there. down over there, look for the rotating sign. We've got the product uh, racked up and working. We'd love to answer any of your questions. So, gonna, so the, you're ready now with the, the Quam product, the Dense Quam is... Yeah, we're selling it's it. It's not we're in we're, development, it's, no, it's no, ready it's to in, go. No, it's okay. in our customers' networks. All right, so next year this time, what will be the watts per Quam? Well, or really, what, what is the time frame of it? What, how does this... Really what a lot of the good work that's going into the semi group right now is can we use intelligence to start turning parts of the product off as you're not using it? Right. And can we start to get some message sets and some intelligence communication so that we can understand what part, what, what are they using? When are those services being used? When aren't they being used? And can we start shutting things off when they're in a dormant state? Which was easier to do before the internet, right? Because now it used to be that, I don't remember. Usage the, patterns used to be really predictable. Right. Um, the two things that have kind of changed is usage is very unpredictable, so you really need real-time messaging now. You can't, a lot more in the middle of the night. A lot more in the middle of the night, yeah. a lot more differences, um, and it changes really on a particular service group by service group basis. So you really need that real-time metrics and real-time messaging. But I think there's a lot of good work, there's a lot of good discussion saying it's a well-defined product problem. We should be able to solve this problem. And there's a lot of good focus, I think, both within the customer community around how would we do that, what makes sense for their end customers, and also within the vendor community on how do we do this. Because we recognize this is a problem that is going to continue to get worse. So let's design intelligent equipment. Let's then give it the capabilities to be very, very power efficient. Okay. One last question that was yeah. off script. Sure. So Comscope is known forever in this industry as we're the cable and cable TV. How did you get from we're the cable and cable TV to intelligent universal edge really wide Really a recognition band. that our customers look to us for solutions. And, and as we talk to them about more and more around what are the problems, what are the areas of focus for you, we recognize that we wanted to keep adding to our portfolio and, you know, 
cable's an important customer for us. It's, a, it's the heritage of Comscope. So, sure, yeah. you know, we want to make sure we're solving the problems that are relevant to our customers. And we're going to just keep adding to our solutions, to our product family, to give them those solutions. Sounds great. Well, thank you for spreading the word on what are we calling it? I call it Universal Edge Quam, Wideband Quam. Universal uh, Wideband Edge Quam. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. You take care. All right. Next up, we have.